Two black Muslims held a protest meeting today over what they called a police attack on 24-year-old Larry Crosby and three other Muslims. They have charged the Friday incident was just one more example of police attacking members of their faith who were just minding their own business. The first murders in this spree occurred on October 19, 1973, and were particularly grisly. Richard Haig, 30, and his wife, Keita, 28, were kidnapped and forced into a white van as they took an evening walk around Coit Tower. Keita was fondled by two men, and then nearly decapitated by a third with a machete. One of the killers then attacked Richard with the machete, but he survived. Police said a Berkeley policeman shot Crosby after Crosby struck a policeman and pointed a gun at him. The incident happened in Oakland after Berkeley police officer William Cooper stopped a black Muslim delivery van on a complaint that they had sold fish without a license. The van had been chased into Oakland, police said. An argument and scuffle ensued during which Crosby was shot three times by another officer who had come to the first officer's aid. Three other men in the van with the shooting victim were arrested on assault charges. Crosby was the only person seriously hurt, and he's in critical condition. Al Dale... One of the people wounded by one of the zebra killers was former San Francisco mayor and all-around charmer Art Agnos who was shot twice at point-blank range while chatting on a sidewalk after a meeting in Potrero. I was walking down a street in the North Beach area, and they were abducted by three men at gunpoint, forced into a car and brought here. The woman's throat was cut. The man was hit several times over the head with what police describe as a large bladed object. He was left for dead, but he managed to walk back up to the roadway where he flagged down a motorist who took him to the nearest police station. And the light that fades When we were high High And the light that fades But it makes no difference But it makes no difference But it makes no difference What it thinks In an unprecedented move, San Francisco Mayor Joseph Aliotto and Police Chief Donald Scott announced that police officers would begin stopping and questioning large numbers of black citizens who resembled the description of the killer, a black man with a short afro and a narrow chin. Once stopped, checked and cleared, each citizen received a specially printed zebra check card from the officer, S, that they could show to police if stopped again. What I've seen. left their Chestnut Street home around 9 o'clock for an evening stroll when two neatly dressed men approached the young couple. A night of terror which left the 28-year-old woman the victim of a vicious murder had begun. The Hagues were forced at gunpoint into a van driven by a third man. Richard Hague was struck unconscious and when he came to, his wife was lying dead beside him. Passersby took the bleeding, incoherent man to the nearest police station. When police returned to the scene at 25th and Minnesota Streets, they found the body hands tied behind the back, the throat slit almost completely through. Homicide inspectors can offer no explanations. Money was not the motive as the Hagues had only a few dollars between them. We certainly feel that in San Francisco our streets are safe and we've been certainly striving for this and uh, this is the first attack of this type we have had in the city and uh, uh, of course we've assigned more patrols and also uh, have more men assigned in the investigation of this case to determine actually what is behind it. Police are seeking witnesses who might have been in the neighborhood of Chestnut Street and Columbus Avenue around 9 Saturday evening, or who might have seen the light-colored Dodge van driven by the assailants. Please call the homicide detail if you have any information. This is Linda Shen for Eyewitness News. I would have not come out at night. Because we've had too many bad experiences. You don't walk around here at night. <laughs> no, no. As I say, when my husband was in the hospital, I took a taxi home. And I lived just two blocks away. 4187s and an attempted 8187. A series of 4262. Slender bill, short to medium length here. Mustache, possible goatee, wearing a...
follows. In all instances, no more than two suspects were seen by witnesses, and two different orders have been described as being the, at the same scenes. Suspect from Gurion de Vizadero, the end. Looking at the time and knowing the locations, it was possible for one vehicle containing any number of suspects to have committed all these shootings. The shootings began last night around 7.30 in the Haight-Ashbury district. By 10 p.m., four persons lay dead, all white. Another victim lies critically wounded in San Francisco General Hospital. Police have labeled the manhunt Operation Zebra. All the victims were shot with 32 caliber bullets, which came from two and possibly three weapons. According to Chief of Inspectors Charles Barker at a hastily called news conference this Bobby morning. Brian fired at me twice and uh, shot me. That was the channel they used. They had to use a secret code because their intelligence was getting penetrated by the black Muslims. There were cops in the, in the uh, police force that were tipping off the black Muslims. And as all these crimes, this is what they, they all, they all explode because one snitches. He can't live with himself. He's got pressure. The other cops lean on him about stuff. They, they just crack, right? And they, they give up the other ones. So they put the one guy up in a hotel, and the, cop, and the black Muslims went looking for him in that hotel. So they knew that there would be dirty cops helping the black Muslims out trying to get this guy whack, the witness against the guy, the witness against the other four black Muslims. And you know what? There's other, there's other guys that were involved that were never charged. And all those guys are still in Quentin. You know, they were rather, a couple of them were pretty low intelligence. But... Yeah, I mean, it was it was a panic. There was nobody walking the streets in San Francisco at night. Not like now. Everybody was petrified. There was almost a race war. A uh, former police chief writes a book about the zebra killers, and he gives the inside dope on the cop who, uh, the black cop who was with the black, tipping off the black Muslims and stuff. And victims of the zebra killers still meet every year at City Hall. Can you know, the victims. Because that's one of, one of those big crimes. You know, people know the name, but you you really don't hear that much about it. It's, it's covered yeah. up. No, oh, yeah, yeah, it totally is, totally is. Black is, Muslims don't want to hear about it. Nobody wants to hear about that kind of thing. You well, know, do you still have a lot of black, racial thing? Do you have a lot of black Muslims there still now? Uh, no. See, that's the thing. That's the thing about San Francisco. It's been gentrified. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the zebra killers, uh, now how many people do you think were in the organization? Well, there's just no telling. I mean, it could have been 100 guys. I mean, there could have been 100, 200 people, but the only guys they caught were like the five guys. They shot the one guy, Archie, what's his name down, Ar I don't know, Archie Ship, or I don't know what his name is, but he caught him down in the, down in the hate, the lower hate, and uh, he caught him with a gun, but he didn't give up any of the other ones. One of the other guys gave up all the other ones. He says he wasn't involved. In, the one who gives up all the other ones says he wasn't involved in that shoot, any of those shootings, any of the killings. But that's dubious. The Klan and the Black Muslims do hits together. No, I have not heard that. Yeah, the Klan and the and the, and the Black Muslims do hits together because they they have the same goals. They both believe in total racial segregation. Yeah, I have heard of that. They, they, they do agree on that. They do cooperate on yeah, that. And they'll, they do, that. And, they'll, and they'll reciprocate if they, if they need to do a hit and stuff. I mean, that's just a rumor. I don't know. I don't have any evidence that that's true. But that's that's the conspiracy behind that. Did you see the man shoot at you? No, I didn't see him shoot at me because my face was turned, toward, turned towards the women. And the man came from my left side and I was facing this way. Uh, after... Hearing the gunshots, I thought that there were firecrackers going off because I didn't see anything. And the women started running away uh, to protect me and asking me to come with them. I started chasing them to calm them down and reassure them that no one's going to hurt them. And at that point, they told me that uh, the man was trying to kill me, and I wheeled around quickly to see um, what they were talking about. And that's when I saw the man for the first time standing about eight or ten yards away uh, with the gun in his hand looking at me with this blank stare. Um, he probably was trying to figure out why I didn't fall, <laughs> mainly because I didn't know I had been shot until the women came back and told me. Well, what you've seen... Things are continuing. I have every confidence that the police are doing the best they can. It's just such a baffling kind of process. These indiscriminate murders all over the city that it's hard to get your finger on it, I guess.
Lee Cooks was found dead in a hospice unit at California Medical Facility in Vacaville. His cause of death is still pending. Cooks, known as one of the zebra killers, was sentenced in San Francisco in 1976 to serve life with the possibility of parole for first-degree murder, kidnapping, and first-degree robbery.